Hello everyone, welcome to hands-on business analytics. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the application and operations research about birth management. Specifically, we are also going to talk about the sequence pair, the virtual wolf mark, simulated linearly, and its use in TSP problem. So let me first introduce what is uh, the background in this problem. So vessels are uh, uh, used to ship the containers all over the world and they need to transship these containers at the terminal. Here we have an example of cap terminal and this is a whole terminal. Each terminal would contain several wolves and each wolf would contain several births. So in this graph, this shaded area represents the time in which a ship is moored at the birth and the white blocks represent the time when the birth is not being utilized. So the general objective is to try to minimize the sum of these white blocks okay and as for the overall process flow of birth management usually we would conduct dynamic birth allocation to factor in the birthing delays that would uh, occur in reality and finally we will come up with uh, uh, a template for actual mooring and operations plan so usually we have uh, so for for this uh, first template this is optimal because um, here one two five belongs to one group and three four belong to another group which means uh, vessel 1 would transship co containers to vessel 2 and vessel 2 to vessel 5 and same for 3 and 4 so in this template vessel 1 can directly tra transfer containers to vessel 2 without moving a lot so the operation cost the transportation cost here is very low However, in reality, we would expect the delays in the arrival time of vessels. So, what if vessel 1 is delayed? So, here we would we allow for a time buffer. So that, and, and also, when vessel 1 is delayed, and vessel 2 has no place here, to stay, it can stay at this birth location. So they so here the operation cost is raised because the containers in vessel one have to be moved to vessel two and then moved again to vessel five. So it's a sacrifice. And in this problem, we define two major objectives. One is service level waiting time, and another is operational cost connectivity. Here, we say that a vessel is birth and arrival if its operation starts within two hours of arrival. And for its operational cost, here's our objective to minimize CIJ represent the number of containers to be transferred from vessel I to vessel J and this D function is actually the distance function between vessel I and vessel J here vessel I and vessel J represent the middle point 
of the vessel, respectively. So each, each template would result in uh, a unique model, and each model would have its own efficient frontier. So here we can see, obviously, that the efficient frontier of model B is better than model A, because at the same operational cost, its service level is higher. And how to address this problem of uh, both time and space constraints? Here we introduce the concept of sequence pair to divide the problem into the two sub-problems. And first we need to understand what is a sequence pair. So it's just a pair of different combinations of numbers and in the h dimension in h we define that if 3 is before 4 then 3 cannot see 4 at its upper left side so for example if this is 3 and it's before 4, then at this side there should be no 4 here. Okay, so this is H. And for V, if 3 is before 4, then 3 cannot see 4 at its lower left side. So here, here is 3, and 4 should not be here, should not be at its lower left side. So according to this pair, we can conclude that 4 can only appear at the right side of 3, which is this side. So the, uh, and also 4 can only arrive after 3 has left. So according to this pair, the relationship of both time and space between these two is determined. And according to this pair, we can get the relationship of each pair and transform into these two graphs. This graph represents the Space, space relationship and this graph represents the time relationship and according to these two graphs we can have a final template for packing so by dividing this problem into two sub-problems of both space and time we can uh, we have the different constraints for each class so for the space class uh, what does this uh, constraint represent so for example sorry that's my pointer For example, this is I and this is J. <coughs> what this constraint uh, says is that, so this is a middle point of I, and uh, this is the length of 
Berg's I. So this uh, this is I uh, X I. So X I plus the half of his lens equal this lens, right? This distance. And same for vessel J. So this is vessel J. And here we have wolf J. So here is occupying three births. So here is the total length of J and this is the length of uh, the length of xj. So here xj minus the half of lj equals this part, right? So what this constraint means is basically that vessel I could not overlap with vessel three. Otherwise they would uh, um, they would clash. They would crash, right? So this is the constraint for space dimension. And for the time dimension what this means is basically that um, vessel J could only arrive after vessel I has left. So here is the time of arrival of vessel I plus its processing time. So the total time should be less than the time of arrival of vessel J. And besides these two constraints, we also have the additional complexity of periodic arrival of vessels because each vessel would likely to arrive each week or every two weeks. So we have these three constraints, uh, three kind of uh, complexities. And how to address them? First, let's come to the time, uh, time dimension and how to estimate the expected delays. So here we use the uh, common project management concept of uh, critical path. So what this graph means that in order to um, complete all of the tasks, what is the minimum number of days? So so here, the basic objective is to find the longest path in order to ensure that each task is completed. So here, the longest path is 3 plus 1 plus, not, uh, plus 3. OK. And uh, for our constraints for the time dimension, the aim is to minimize the total time of delay and it is defined as the uh, as the actual arrival uh, actual time of arrival minus the planned uh, uh, the scheduled time of arrival so here we also have the two hours of uh, um, birth uh, arrival time so this uh, their difference is the time delay and for each vessel we would assign different weight so if uh, if there's a delay in vessel i i would assign a weight to the vessel i 
uh, as a penalty. So the total sum of this formula is our objective, subject to constraint that the time of uh, the actual time of arrival should be equal to or bigger than the planned and uh, the scheduled time of arrival. And another constraint is ship I and uh, ship J could only arrive after ship I has left. Let's come to the constraint for our connectivity cost at the space level. So here our objective is to minimize the total connectivity cost as I have explained and for the constraints these three basically mean that uh, two ships should not overlap and here YIK represent the represent uh, if it if it equals one it represents um, the vessel K is birth at wolf I and here U and L represent the upper and lower bound of the wolf K and basically it's a binary value first or not first at wolf k no uh, wolf i and here x i should be equal to or bigger than zero because it's the distance between the middle point of the vessel and the baseline so by dividing the problem into both space and time constraints uh, we would easily uh, we, we can more easily uh, uh, try to uh, try to solve this problem however we we still have the complexity of the periodic arrival of vessels and our approach to address this problem is through the rec rectangle packing on cylinder so here in this uh, graph if vessel 5 arrives at this time of point every week this part so the, this part of vessel 5 would crash with the this part uh, of vessel 4 so in order to address this problem to avoid this crash we use a, a packing plan on cylinder so that they would not overlap So basically this approach means uh, to wrap it up on the cylinder and when we unwrap it to its associated static birth plan, it would result in this graph. However, this approach is not feasible because this wrapping and unwrapping cannot guarantee the over uh, the no overlapping because here you can see although in this graph they are wrapped we cannot ensure that they are not overlapped so in order to address this problem we introduced the concept, concept of virtual wolf mark so it's basically an approach by uh, Introducing the additional vessels, which are virtual, and uh, it's probably is uh, it has a uh, appropriate arrival time and zero length and processing time because it's virtual. There's no need to assign the length and the processing time. And a key point is it has a lower bound constraint. So what is a lower bound constraint? As you can see in this graph. So vessel 4 
if it arrives, it would crash with vessel two because they have this uh, um, deck view. And by introducing the upper bound, I move. I can move vessel four upward a little bit so that it will not crash with vessel two. So through this method, we can ensure no overlapping after wrapping it around in a cylinder. However, it introduces additional vessels, which means we have a bigger problem size. So this VN is only introduced when needed. So after this uh, uh, introduction of different methods, what we are left to do is to search over all the sequence pairs in order in order to come up with a good one. And for how to search the uh, search over the sequence pairs, we use the, the simulated learning based local search, which means to conduct single single swipe, double swipe, single shift double shift in order to find the best sequence pair. Now what is single sh single swipe? Single swipe basically means to swipe well swipe uh, randomly two uh, two vessels in the H or V dimension or both. So for example this is original sequence pair by shifting two and one we will get this sequence pair one two right and for the double swipe we would swap both h and v dimensions so i swap one two here and also he has one two we have two one okay and what is single shift single shift is basically shift mm, the position of one vessel to to the other vessel to 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 so specifically here one is at the left side of two sorry oh, okay um actually it's a uh, so three is at the right side of two so i want to put it at the left side of two so this will result in this sequence pair by shifting three to this location, and for the double shift, I basically shift three in both H and V dimensions. Shift three here, and in V dimension, I shift three here. Right. And after this different approaches uh, used in the greater neighborhood algorithm uh, we can find a very good sequence pair so in this algorithm since we keep the time constraint constant we could only focus on the space level and we can evaluate all possible locations for i for example if for vessel four, all the locations of uh, all the locations of other vessels are fixed, and now explore now explore the best location for vessel four. So if there is a better location, for example here, I move four from here to here. So this is basically the concept of this algorithm and uh, we would also introduce VM in order to avoid the situation we described before in the packing in cylinder however when we introduce VM the problem size is quite large so um, the essence of this VM concept is basically to set low bounds as I have it described before so here we would only set low bounds for those vessels which are needed to be propped 
in the cylinder by Vm so as to reduce the problem size and completion time. And now let's come to the TSP problem. So if we use the greedy algorithm, if we use the greedy algorithm, it will always choose the next closest city. For example, I have uh, these cities here, each point represents a city. And it will try to find the next closest city. Here it will find this city instead of this city because it's closer. And this approach would result in a suboptimal route. So it is a local optimum, not a global optimum. So here the distance is this. And if we use a local search algorithm, we could find a better solution by, by applying a single change to a long solution each time. So for example, here this point is connected to this point. And now uh, uh, and this point is connected to this point. And now conduct a single change of moving uh, of connecting this point to this point and this point to this point. And the result is uh, the distance is uh, uh, smaller, so it's a better solution. And I would repeat this process until I get a, a minimum. And this is again a local minimum. So what is a local minimum and what is a global minimum? So you can see this graph. We have the hilly curves. And this point represents a local minimum. And this point represents a global minimum. So how to find the global minimum? Here we use the simulated learning method. So the idea is to probabilistically accept worse solutions early in the search. So the aim is to um, clamp out this local minimum, come to this point, and then accept a better solution by moving forward, and then, then come to this global optimum. And the, the, uh, we have a probability of accepting the candidate tool, which is uh, this uh, worst, worst tool. So the, the probability is basically determined by the temperature. So here, in this exponential function, if if the temperature is very high, so here we basically know it's a negative number because if the candidate distance is bigger, we still accept it, and it's a uh, negative. So so here at this part, if the temperature is higher. Then we will move this side, and the result of this curve is actually close to one. So, if the probability of accepting a candidate two is close to one, we are more likely to accept it, right? So we are more likely to climb out this local minimum, uh, local optimum, in order to get to the global op optimum. And now I will demonstrate the use of simulated learning algorithm in TSP problem using Shiny for our study. So what is a Shiny? Shiny is a web application framework for R. It can turn your analysis into interactive web applications and we can use its internal functions without any knowledge of HTML, CMS, CSS, or JavaScript. 
So now I will, I will give a short demo. So the basic idea of using Shiny to create your own app is that you need to have um, a script at the server side and a script at the client side. So as for the client side, it's for uh, UI represent uh, represents user interface. I basically want to show this line and others I leave uh, blank. And at the server side, I basically do nothing. Okay. So by in order to use shiny functions, we need to first install the shiny package and then load it. Here I have installed it. So I will directly load this package and then run my app locally. So here, where is my app? Place the very path here. Okay. Change this to forward slash. And here you go. So basically the result and just a uh, uh, display of a line. So quite simple, right? And here we want to demonstrate the use of simulated learning by the shiny. So, so we have a website um, describing the use of simulated learning in the traveling salesman problem. So this guy told Scalator, he wrote a code about this application. And basically, I'm going to use his code for demonstration purposes. And if you're interested, you can Google it and check this basic application. And at the bottom, I have uh, downloaded his code and import it in my own laptop basically this code what is it okay so guys that was just a problem with my editor now it's okay so in this code, the main point, the essence is this. So this is the probability that I will accept the candidate tool, which is the exponential function. And here we have temperature, right? So if you are interested in how this code is written, and you want to um, understand it better, you can check my other video in which I will explain this code line by line. So let's run this code. S A N N. Right. So here is the traveling sales app, sales my app. Let me let me open it in browser. So basically, here is the are the cities over the world. I can select the cities to be displayed. Now I select USA. As you can see, it's automatically changed. And I can also input the name of cities manually. For example, I want to add Washington. Okay, Washington. And then, or select cities randomly. And then, 
bit soft. So here, this is the a learning schedule. Basically, the temperature will move according to this curve. And here are the parameters which you can use to set about the curve. And when we click on solve, the app will try to find a global optimal for us. It is worth noting that this algorithm will try to find a good solution for us but it cannot ensure that it is a global optimal but it is good enough it is better than local search or greedy algorithm right now we also have this distance trend okay so this is basically the birth management and the use of simulated learning in traveling salesmen. Thanks for thanks for watching. See you next time.